From the station working for you, this is WRTV News at 7, streaming now. First at 7, an Indianapolis woman is looking for answers tonight after a bullet came through her apartment window while she and her family slept. Good evening to you. I'm Mark Mullins. And I'm Amanda Starantino. It happened early Monday morning at the View at 79th apartment complex in Washington Township. That window has yet to be repaired and you can still see the damage. The woman who lives there tells us she doesn't feel her family was targeted, but she says that does not make it any less nerve wracking. There's only one round, so that will, that's, leads me to believe that either someone was playing with the gun, somebody misfired the gun, they didn't know a bullet was in the chamber, something ignorant happened which means that someone ignorant has a firearm and doesn't know what they're doing with it. And that's terrifying. Thankfully, she and her family are OK. We are still working to get answers for her as to when that window will be replaced. National Guard troops are inside the halls of Congress tonight after a deadly incident outside the US Capitol led to a total lockdown. Now a Capitol officer is dead along with the suspect. Early this afternoon, Capitol Police responded to reports of a driver ramming a vehicle into two Capitol Police officers and a barricade on Constitution Avenue. That driver got out of the car and waved a knife. Two Capitol Police officers were injured in the incident. One is now dead. The suspect died later at the hospital. This all comes as Washington remains on edge nearly three months after an armed mob stormed the Capitol. This has been an extremely difficult time for U.S. Capitol Police after the events of January 6 and now the events that have occurred here today. So I ask that you keep our U.S. Capitol Police family in your thoughts and prayers. Authorities said the attack did not appear to be related to terrorism. Now, Congress is not in session this week and few lawmakers are working in the Capitol complex. Now let's get the latest numbers from the State Department of Health on COVID-19 and its impact on Indiana. Another 1,256 Hoosiers have been diagnosed with the virus. 20 more Hoosiers have died. The total number of deaths is now 12,662. Since March, more than 688,000 Hoosiers have tested positive for COVID-19 and more than 8.9 million tests have been administered in Indiana. Today was the second day of the mass vaccination clinic at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. This is a view from our Pagoda cam at IMS. You're looking at it live. The vaccine clinic ended at 7 and will resume again tomorrow at 9 a.m. Organizers hope to administer 6,000 doses of the one dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine per day. The next day with available appointments is April 25th. There are slots open the 25th through the 30th. Throughout the pandemic, health department data has shown Hispanic and African American communities have been disproportionately impacted by COVID-19. Now that all Hoosier adults are eligible to get vaccinated, the state health department is keeping a close eye on those rates to make sure everyone is protected. WRTV's Cameron Riddle is talking with a local pastor who is bringing the vaccine directly to his neighborhood. Millions of Hoosiers have been fully vaccinated against COVID-19 and an Indianapolis pastor and his church are doing their part to make sure Hoosiers in Indy's predominantly black neighborhoods have access to that shot too. People kept being very skeptical about the acceptability, but I said, I don't want to yet say that we have an acceptability problem. And I think we have an accessibility problem. We need to take the vaccine to where people are. Pastor Clarence Moore of New Era Church has been proactive in using his West Side Church as a vaccination location. After partnering with the Marion County Health Department and medical professionals who are also members of his church, New Era Church will vaccinate 50 people with the Moderna vaccine this weekend. He says while appointments for this weekend didn't take long to fill up, it is still a challenge getting people to understand that the vaccine is safe. They didn't trust the fact that it was a title warp speed. They felt like that that the scientists didn't do due diligence in making sure that the vaccine was safe. Hoosiers who show up this weekend will come back in four weeks to get their second shot. Between now and then, Moore, who is already fully vaccinated, is hoping to get additional doses of the vaccine and use his church as a vaccine site every weekend in April. This longtime pastor believes if black Hoosiers have the adequate access to the vaccine and the correct information about it, we could even the score that shows more black people getting COVID and less of the vaccine. And I think if we get the right people to talk about 
the efficacy um, uh, and, and get get accessible to that information, I think that we we could improve uh, the acceptability. Cameron Riddle, WRTV. Now that all Hoosiers age 16 and older are eligible to get vaccinated, advocates for those living with disabilities are hoping to clear up some confusion. Earlier in the state vaccine rollout, Hoosiers at a higher risk for COVID, those with disabilities and certain medical conditions were required to register for a vaccination appointment through a link provided by their doctor as opposed to the state's website. But many face long wait times on those links while the state opened up eligibility to more age groups. For people who are still waiting on a link from their doctor, what is your advice? Don't. Just go to the, the main website. It is not worth it to wait for that special, that quote unquote special link. It's not. It limits your ability to, to make, cho make the, the decisions that are going to work for you and your schedule. If you go through that online portal that the state has set up, you know, the, or the website, the RSHOT website, you get access to all vaccination sites in your area, not just the restricted ones through that special unique link. To register for a vaccination through the state, go to ourshot.in.gov or call 211. To find an appointment through a retail pharmacy, you can go to the websites of stores like Kroger, Walmart, Meyer, and CVS. And now let's give you some information you may need if you're looking to get vaccinated. If you do not have transportation, IU Health is offering free rides to any vaccine site in the state. The appointment does not need to be at an IU Health clinic either. For more information, call 1-888-IU-HEALTH and then choose option 9. If you cannot leave your home, officials will bring the vaccine straight to you through the Homebound Hoosier program. To sign up for that, contact your local area agency on aging at 1-800-986-3505. And if language is a barrier, Spanish options are now available on the state vaccination website or by calling 211. Burmese will soon be available as well. We have all this information up for you right now on the WRTV app and online at WRTV.com. Nice that we're seven minutes past seven o'clock here on a Friday and we're still able to see the sunshine out there today. Although we did have some chilly, chilly temperatures out there today, Kevin, hoping for a better weekend. I think the light wind helped the feel a little bit today, as well as all that sunshine you mentioned. Mark, 811 is the number you're looking for as far as sunset time. I love this. The sun angle is such that you're getting quite a reflection off of White River and the downtown canal. Temperatures, well, they're at 48 in Indianapolis, 46 Kokomo, upper 40s also down in Monroe County. That's a nice recovery from the lower 20s. Notice how calm the wind is. 24 hours from now, won't be so calm. They'll be stronger. Temperatures, although not as cold tonight, still drop just below the freezing mark during the day tomorrow. The wind will go to work in changing our temperatures. We'll talk about how much warmer and the trend continues to snowball, so to speak, in weather terms next week. Amanda. A Northside Community Center that helps mentor children and provide after-school services needs donations to make much-needed renovations to their facility. The MLK Center, located at 40th and Illinois Street, is located in a nearly 60-year-old building that was not originally created to be a community center. Since 2015, they have spent more than $150,000 on maintenance. The executive director says that's money that could be spent on children. So right now they have a $2.2 million campaign to upgrade the building. The HVAC system is original to the building and it's kind of off or on. So it's hot or cold. And then the windows are original to the building too that the AAA Hoosier Motor Club built in 1962. So we need new windows um, that aren't drafty that you can't see outside. And then we will get um, a new welcome center that connects us to Tarkington Park. So there'll be a new entrance on the front, a new entrance on the back, and we'll just be better connected to all the activities happening in the park. The center needs donations to raise $1.2 million. The United Way will then match $1 million through its capital projects fund, which is enabled by support from Lilly Endowment since 2000. The fund has made grants to more than 160 projects at more than 80 local organizations. We will put a link to donate on WRTV.com. Well, something you might have missed during the pandemic, a lot of people are not catching a cold or the flu. And scientists believe there's a strong connection to something that you've been doing over the last year. That story next. Partner, Cheryl Robb. 
Well, good news for people who have been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. You can celebrate Easter with friends and family. The CDC issued guidance on what you can do. If it's been two weeks since your last vaccine dose, you can safely gather indoors with other fully vaccinated people without wearing a mask. Those who are not yet fully vaccinated are advised to stick to their own households. They can still gather, but should do so outdoors, wear masks and stay six feet apart. Well, if you've gone a whole year without getting sick with a flu or cold, it's very possible your mask has played a role. Yeah, a new study by researchers at Vanderbilt University found fewer children ended up in the hospital for respiratory illnesses since the start of the pandemic. During the 2020 flu season, only one child died. Adults have fared better also. According to CDC estimates, we'll likely see the number of flu deaths in the hundreds rather than the usual thousands. Doctors say masks and social distancing play a role in stopping these respiratory illnesses from spreading further. However, before the pandemic, masks were not worn commonly by the public to avoid infection. Healthcare workers were already taking precautions. We use masks around people infected with those viruses in the hospital. Healthcare workers wear masks around influenza patients and patients with a lot of other respiratory viruses in the hospital to try and keep um, ourselves and our staff safe. While it's unlikely that we'll continue wearing masks in the same capacity as we are now, doctors say it's possible people will want to wear them during cold and flu seasons. Your financial situation during the pandemic may be impacting your ability to save. Even before the pandemic, 40% of people say they couldn't cover an unexpected $400 expense without going into debt. That's according to a Federal Reserve Bank survey. Even actually having $250 saved, makes a really big difference in terms of housing stability, people not getting evicted, being able to keep their um, electricity bills on, being able to fill prescription medications. Saver Life is a free platform that offers you incentives to save. 80% of their members are women and 60% are people of color. The majority start with less than $100 in their savings account and the goal is to get them to $1,000. Let me take a swing at the forecast for tomorrow. Temperatures climb above average into the 60s, and that's the base temperature from which we'll continue to warm up. Despite the economic challenges, the pandemic has brought a global shortage of truck drivers. But as Usher Qureshi reports, some employers are willing to pay big bucks to those willing to strap in for the long haul. It's a job that could pay half a million a year. A shortage of truck drivers has increasingly been a problem for decades. But with the pandemic causing manufacturing hubs to shut down, cargo and freight demand was affected as well. When we shuttered manufacturing and we, we shut down all the imports and exports and uh, everything came to a screeching halt, everyone traded in their trucks. Jim Grundy is the CEO of CISO Energy, a Texas-based bulk commodity carrier that provides transportation services for companies like Amazon and J.B. Hunt. You've seen uh, anywhere from 40 to 50 percent of the entire direct driver pool will leave the industry just in the last 12 months. Uh, it's been substantially damaging uh, to various companies and you're seeing rates correspond, which then get handed off to the end user. The pandemic also has been a major speed bump in the training, testing and licensing of commercial truck drivers. There's no one coming through these trucking programs or schools right now. There's, there's so much analytics surrounding as to why, but the biggest issue is the juice isn't worth the squeeze uh, for the younger generation of folks. But wages have been the biggest obstacle. A recent Centerline study shows 75% of truck drivers said competitive pay is the top factor to take a job. Half said existing wages are not competitive enough. But late last year, wages started drastically changing as requests from companies to move freight spiked. Folks at our company are making upwards of $12,000, $13,000 a week gross revenue. And that's really an anomaly compared to what's happening in the, in the uh, around the globe. Grundy says he hopes the lure of potentially making up to a half million dollars a year will bring drivers back to keep the industry rolling forward. I'm Asha Qureshi reporting. One local company that's hiring people once again says it's mostly because March Madness is here in Indy. Classic Cleaners has had the job of cleaning the uniforms of many of the teams in town for the men's NCAA basketball tournament. The company's production manager says he hopes it's a sign that the tide has turned for this business. I really appreciate the NCAA um, giving us this opportunity. Um, it's definitely lifted spirits around here. It's given us the opportunity to give some people some more hours in our production, um, a little bit more money in their pockets. 
so overall I'm, I'm, I'm happy that we were, we had the opportunity and um, I hope that we can in the future do this again. Lawrence Dickey says that they're still working to find out just how much extra business they've been seeing during the tournament. He says that's good news for his staff, some of whom were brought back after being furloughed last year. The core of the cold air is moving off to the east. If you just follow the colors, the darker blues represent the coldest air as you head toward uh, Lake Erie into New York State. But look what happens as you go west of Indiana. Temperatures jump into the 50s, then the 60s, then the 70s. We've got all of that in our future as temperatures go above average for the next week. Tomorrow morning, still cold just not as cold. 31 for the low. We take another step forward as far as warming up Sunday and we continue the trend with lows returning to the 50s early next week. As far as mowing the lawn, if you haven't mowed the lawn yet, I bet you've thought about it at least. And uh, next several days, no issues. Everything continues to dry out. It means good news if you need yard work done. Wind out of the south, anywhere from 15 to 25 tomorrow, some higher gusts. It's a warm direction. We're replacing the colder northwest wind with a stronger, warmer southwest wind during the day tomorrow. That'll take our temperatures into the low 50s by the time we get to noon. Afternoon high temperatures with lots of sunshine make it into the lower 60s. Remember, 59 is the average high temperature as you look around central Indiana at forecast highs for tomorrow. Those are also uh, some of the coolest temperatures within the seven-day forecast. All the rest of the high temperatures over the next week will be warmer. Easter Sunday, we start warmer, we finish warmer. Temperature of about 68 for the afternoon high with a mixture of clouds and sunshine and the wind will be calmer than tomorrow. Other temperatures around the region on Sunday may be touching the low 70s in the southern portion of the state. If that's our goal, be patient because we'll make it there. Monday, 73. Tuesday, temperature at 74. Then we'll introduce something we haven't seen in a bit. That'll be the chance of rain. Of course, we had snow yesterday, at least a trace of snow, but in this case it'll be rain coming back Wednesday and the chance for some thunderstorms as we get to Thursday of next week. I'll just let you soak in the sunshine and watch the temperatures warm as we go, especially Monday through Wednesday of next week. That's probably the uh, warmest stretch, but even when we cool off with some thunderstorms on Thursday, the temperature is still 69 degrees and the lows are in the 50s. Very enjoyable. Have a good weekend. We'll be back to finish up the news right after this. New City Furniture. Well, check this out. A crazy start to the school day. Passengers aboard this school bus in Virginia got a rude awakening after a deer came flying through the front windshield and thrashed around for a few tense moments there. At least one student had been dozing on the morning ride when that happened. I was trying to sleep and I woke up to something on my back and then I realized it was a deer and I was just very confused. Oh, the quick driver quickly stopped the bus, opened the doors and let that panicking animal out. An eyewitness then told the driver that amazingly, the deer appeared to be okay. Wow. wow. Huh. Well, scientists are speculating about an odd rock spotted by one of NASA's Mars rovers. The Perseverance rover tweeted a picture of the Martian rock. You can see a row of marks where it zapped it with a laser. Perseverance says it did that to learn more about the planet's geology. NASA hasn't said what the rock is just yet, but it looks like meteorites scientists have seen elsewhere. Some say the six inch rock could be a weathered piece of bedrock or even be a far flung chunk of Mars. Oh. It could also be, uh, isn't there a candy bar? Couldn't it be a Mars bar? <laughs> sure, Kevin, <laughs> that, that's definitely probably it. You're right. I mean, it would be embarrassing, but it could turn out yet. to be that. 62 uh, during the day tomorrow, 68 on Sunday. I'll take a bite of it first. We'll see what it is. Thank More you, of Kevin's Kevin. jokes tonight at 11. <laughs>